Today we are going to discuss FTP. Uh, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. Many of our clients have experienced using their web browser to log into a page where they download files. This is not what we are talking about today. For our purposes, FTP represents the ability to both download and upload files directly from your local computer to a web server in order to change content or elements within a website. This tutorial is designed for people who are using the Microsoft operating system. There are many types of FTP programs. Some are specific to Macs, like Fetch. Others are embedded within larger programs like Dreamweaver or Adobe Go Live. For this tutorial, we are going to use tools that all come standard with Microsoft Windows. To start out, we need to organize our files. Organization is key. We want to set up a folder on our local computer where we will place all the files we will be working on. To do so, you open the My Computer window and we're going to create the file structure by going to My Documents. We're going to make a new folder. We're going to call this folder Website Files, but instead of putting a space between the words, we're going to recommend that you put a hyphen. Then we're going to open this folder and we're going to create a new folder. In this folder, we're going to put the name of the website that we're actually managing. For our discussion purposes, we're going to use ESPN Books, which is a client of ours. So here we put www.espnbooks.com. And then in this folder, we're going to put another subfolder, which we're going to call www. And this is where we're going to put the website files. So we're going to open this folder. And this is where we're going to organize all of the website files we're going to be working on. Now, we need to talk about how we're going to gain access to the remote web server, which could be either down the street or literally across the world. You're going to open another My Computer window, and in the address line, you're going to put the FTP location where that web server is. And in this case, it's FTP colon slash slash www.espnbooks.com So the convention is very similar um, to a web address except you put instead of http colon slash slash we're going to begin it with ftp colon slash slash then we hit enter and upon hitting enter it's act, our computer is actually using our internet connection to talk to and connect to the ESPN Books server. The first time you log in you may be asked to enter your username and your password and this information should have been provided to you by your web developer so you simply type in your username and the password you can click on the save password checkbox and then when you click log on it will connect to the server and you will not be prompted for your username and password again once you're connected you'll see that these are all the files that are on the web server. www is the, is the folder that has all of your website files so you're going to want to double click on that. And this is where you're going to find a majority of the web files that you're going to be working on in reference to your website. To determine which files need to be changed you would go to your web browser and find the page that you actually want to modify. A shortcut would be to go to this location bar here and typically everything to the right of the last slash mark is the title of the document you want to change. In this case it's demo.shtml. So we're going to open back up our two windows here and we're going to look for demo.shtml on the web server which is this window here and if you scroll down you will see that your file names are in alphabetical order so we're looking for demo and there it is and we need to get this file from the web server over to our local server so that we can manipulate and change it and then we can send it back. A tip here is that you always always want to drag the file from the web server over to your local server. This is because there may be multiple people working on on your website and this ensures that the most recent version which is live on the web server here makes its way over to the local server here. Now we have the file it's clearly been moved over 
now we need to figure out how we're going to manage it. We're going to go back here, and for our example, let's just uh, let's just say that this 1983 should actually be 1984. So we're going to go back and open our window here. We're going to right-click on the file, and we're going to say Open With, and we want to use WordPad, which comes with Windows. We could search this entire document looking for 1983, or we can go up to the, the Edit, Find, and we can put 1983 in the tool, and then hit Find Next, and then you can see that, the doc, that it takes you right to that area. I'm going to put my cursor next to the 3, replace it with a 4, and then we want to save this file. And now the file is saved and been modified with that new, that new 1984. So we have to take it from the local machine, and we have to drag it back over to the remote machine, which is the web server. When we do that, it gives you this, are you sure? And we're going to say yes. And now we've overwritten the file that was on the web server with the new one. We're going to click back to our browser, and most of my clients find this confusing because when they go back, they say, the number hasn't changed, it's still 1983. Well, what we actually have to do is reload this page to let the page know that we want to uh, refresh it. Uh, a trick here is to make sure, because there's disk cache, which we can talk about at another time, but we're going to hit the Shift key while we click the refresh uh, button here and that will delete the disk cache and reload the page and now you can see that it plugs in the 1984 so it's that simple and you could do this for anything you want to change any text if you want to change a sentence and swap a new sentence in this is exactly how you would go about doing it